Earth is dead. Those who once might have called it home are long scattered to the endless stars. But in that scattering, on a thousand different worlds, by a thousand different ways, Earth's greatest legends live on. Hey guys, welcome back to Come Again TV, where all geek culture collides. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Today we're taking a look at Annual 1996 Robin Number 5, Legends of the Dead Earth. Legends of the Dead Earth was a large crossover spanning through all of DC's annuals in the year 1996. It features stories about a possible future of the universe in which, although the planet Earth itself had long since died out and its heroes gone with it, the heroes still left an impression and their stories and legends were passed down in various ways. Many, if not all of these legends were spread around the universe by Martian Manhunter as his way of honoring the lives of his departed friends upon the death of his adopted planet. The story for this issue was created by Chuck Dixon with pencils by Staz Johnson. The story for this comic was more than just a little inspired by the cult classic 1976 film, Logan's Run. There are a lot of similarities, I, and I mean a lot. Once we get into the synopsis and the story, you'll see why. So. This issue revolves around Triss Plover, a level 3 agri-laborer turned outlaw, when she's stopped by New Gotham Proctors as she watches Joker bots give chase after Batman who's soaring through the skies. The Proctors are very similar to the Sandmen in Logan's Run, with the Jokers representing Carousel. Triss makes her run after an explosion that catches the Proctors off guard and hides until after bed down so the darkness will hide her from the Proctors. It's during this time that she's discovered and the Proctors as well as the Jokers give chase. She's almost caught until she's rescued by Batman himself. Unlike Bruce Wayne, this Batman does not hide in a cave underground. Instead, he resides in a hangar high above the world, away from the Jokers. This Batman was once a Proctor and quite possibly the oldest person in New Gotham. Just like in Logan's run, there's a nursery where children are created by eggs being taken from girls. They gestate in the proctor's labs. Then after birth, they're sent to the nursery where they're raised to take their place in a number of jobs when they turn nine years old. They work until they reach the age of 30 years old. And then it's time for the giving where just like in Logan's run, they die and the cycle starts over. Batman reveals to the girl that Gotham is actually a generation ship sent from Earth to colonize distant planets. It's been hundreds of generations since the journey began with millions of sacrificing their lives in the giving. It's during this revelation that Batman makes Triss his Robin. The story ends with Batman getting killed and Robin making her way to the mainframe in order to redirect the ship to a suitable planet. Realizing it'll take far longer than she expected to get there, she turns herself over for the giving but centuries later, it's revealed the ship finally makes it and another new Gotham is established. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take a look at the artwork inside here. I wanted to make sure I didn't forget anything on this, so I did write a script for the review, for at least the uh, summary of it. Um, so that's why there wasn't much to that part of the video. But I have always loved this cover it, beautiful artwork I really like enjoy the design of Robin I kind of wish if DC were to create another new Robin in the near future they would use this design it's just it's really nice maybe not the shorts maybe long tight pants uh, but definitely the rest of it would look really nice Back in the day, this was my first issue of Legends of Dead Earth. Since then, you know, I 
I got rid of my original copy and I ended up repurchasing it uh, just a couple years ago. But the artwork is definitely 90s style newsprint pages. You know, regular paper, uh, inked, nothing too nice like today's comics. Uh, but still, you know, it very nicely done. The artwork is awesome. Uh, it, it's a lot better than some of the artwork I saw in the 90s or even today, really. Uh, look at the armor of Batman. It's a full... It's a helmet. It's armor. It's not tights or anything like that. It's actual armor. Uh, he's got a full helmet. Covers his entire face. And he, he's got a heads-up display uh, on his visor. Which is really cool. As you can see, this, was, this did come out during the height of Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. For those of you who remember that show. For those of you who don't, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego was a, it was a kid's game show. Uh, it was Lynn Thigpen, God rest her soul, played the commissioner, or the chief, I can't, one, one of those two. And she would give the contestants assignments. There was usually three contestants, and then an actual host of the show. And the music was done by a group that uh, called Rockapella. They did it with they did the music vocally. Uh, they had no instruments, you know, is just their voices in different tones. Very catchy. The theme song was awesome. It, it, it was a hit in the nineties. <laughs> but here's a look at the uh, Joker. Bots. Not really much to go on there. Uh, that's a good. Uh, kind of looks like a grin there. Eh, it's okay. But there's Triss outside of her Robin armor, Robin suit, whatever you want to call it. Back in the day when comics had tons of advertisements every couple pages I don't really think they do that much anymore they have a few occasionally but it's usually like right in the middle of the comic um, there's a picture of Batman out of his mask as you can see he's an older guy uh, quite possibly African American not entirely sure the way they drew him, he could be either or. Uh, it looks like his hair could either be slicked back or kind of curly. Can't really tell. There's Batman showing Triss that they are actually on a ship. Uh, and the reason they have to do the giving, where at the age of 30, people uh, sacrifice themselves, is because they're on this long journey, and they need soil in order to grow food and all this other stuff. And in order to do that, you know, the nutrients from the soil they left Earth with are long gone. So people have to give their sacrifice their lives in order to further the uh, the cause. So they incinerate the bodies and turn the ashes into part of the soil. As you can see there, Batman rising up. And he gets shot all the hell. There's Batman's shot up body. And then Triss realizing it's going to be over 300 years before they reach a planet to settle on. Decides to uh, give herself 
to the giving, sacrificing herself. And she's not really too happy about it either. And we have here, I have a feeling this might be Martian Manhunter because Martian Manhunter is the one who passes on these stories uh, in each issue. So I have a feeling this might be Martian Manhunter. Who knows? And I'm not, I, I, I don't think this was an actual cereal. I could be wrong, but I, I would have probably eaten some Shazam cereal <laughs> back in the day. Um, I had this issue, Catwoman Annual number three as well, where Batman and Catwoman were criminals and the Joker was the police commissioner. That was a pretty cool story. Um, Adventures of Superman Annual. I don't think I ever had that one. But they were all really good stories. They weren't exactly Elseworld titles. Um, but they were close. So there you have it, guys. Annual 1996, Robin number 5, Legends of the Dead Earth. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm Shannon for Come Again TV. Don't forget to like and comment down below. Have a good one, guys. Take care.